Hey guys, uh, welcome to another video. Hope everyone is doing alright in this sorry state of a world we've got going on right now. The sunny days are few and far between where I am, like figuratively and literally. So today, because the sun is shining, I'm out here with the M365 Pro again because it's been well over a year now since I've been using this pretty regularly and it's been a year since I've done my last top 10 accessories video. And there's actually quite a few things I've purchased since then, some really surprising things that have impressed me, some recommended by viewers, and uh, you know, something in particular that I wish I bought a bit sooner to prevent the damage that I've recently picked up, but more on that in a moment. Yeah, if you're new to the channel, my name is Duncan, and let's go for a spin as I'll show you my definitive top 10 e-scooter accessories that you can buy right now. Let's call it Volume 2. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks guys. Let me just uh, quickly say that I'm not a professional reviewer by any means. I'm just some guy that likes making helpful videos to put on YouTube. Videos like this one do have Amazon links in the description for all the products featured. I am not affiliated with anyone other than Amazon themselves, so you would be helping out the channel if you used the links provided, but I have taken the time with each product to find you the absolute best deals possible for both UK and US. Okay, without any further ado. So at number 10, it's the very thing I wish I bought a little sooner. It's a simple bumper strip. And the only reason I didn't buy one sooner is because I thought, well, it's just cosmetic. I don't exactly need one. Well, um, how wrong could I be? Because I didn't realize just how easily the paintwork would actually come off. Albeit I did rest the scooter against a fairly large rock. And well, this is what happened. I remember thinking, oh, I'll just rest my scooter against this boulder, it won't move, it'll be fine. And then just as I was letting go of the handle, it slid by about half an inch and it scarred my poor Xiaomi for life. So I wish I could say that I bought this bumper strip as a preemptive measure to make sure something like this would never happen, but no, I'm using it now to cover up my mistakes. As you can see here though, it does a pretty good job, right? And if you want to see how easily they are to put on, you can check the video at the top of the screen now where I show how I did mine. Well worth the investment. Okay, next up, I'm going to say a nice pair of riding gloves. Because it doesn't matter how long you've been riding or how careful you are, you can still fall. And well, you never know when it's going to happen. Look, we've all tripped and fallen over before, right? And the first thing that your instincts tell you to do is put your hands out in order to take the brunt of the fall, therefore protecting more important parts of your body. An accident on an e-scooter will cause the same reaction. If you want to protect your body, the first defense is your hands. Now, you don't have to spend silly money to get a really nice pair of protective riding gloves. You can get a good pair for 16 quid, as I've shown in a previous video, but because they're typically Chinese, like made for Asians, I had to buy the largest size just to get a pair that fitted. However, if you're happy to spend like an extra fiver, I recently got these beauties on Amazon for just 21 pounds. Cybertron Dirt Paw Riding Gloves, which have superb reviews all around. In fact, these gloves have even better reviews than the Fox made premium equivalents. The last gloves I showed had some nice padding all in the right places and the colour was perfect to match the scooter. Breathable, comfortable to wear, they help absorb vibrations when riding. But if you take that step up to £21 you get all the same benefits but with some noticeable differences. Like everything in the world, they're still made in China but the sizes are western sizes and the quality of the fabric and the rubber just feels a great deal better on these. A much more premium look and feel. Instead of the foam padding on the previous gloves that I used, these have a type of impact gel and it feels more natural and comfortable, providing a safer grip. Now the next item, as cool as I think it is, has only made it to the number 8 spot because I guess it's maybe only for budding filmmakers and vloggers. 
and that's a 360 degree action camera. So if this is something you've got no interest in off the bat, then just skip now to number seven or maybe even number six. Now, if you are interested in filming any of your journeys, an action camera would be all right, but combining your e-scooter with a 360 camera, you can do stuff like this. There are a few 360 degree cameras out there now that can do this kind of stuff, but the camera I'm using is the new Insta360 ONE R, which is very beginner friendly and you can do lots of cool things with it. Everything can be edited within the app, you don't even need a computer to edit it. Many effects are built into the app, so you just need to shoot normally and the app does the rest. It's really clever stuff. The Insta360 ONE R has various mods, not just a 360 lens, it can also be used as a standard action camera and it has a very high quality 1 inch sensor mod. It's a huge bonus, it's also 100% compatible with all GoPro accessories, so if you already have a GoPro you don't need to buy lots of extra parts. It's a really cool piece of kit and if this appeals to anyone I highly encourage you to watch the full official advert properly or use the link in the description to see the various options on Amazon. It's something I'm having a lot of fun with and it will probably get used in many upcoming videos as I get more familiar with the features. The invisible selfie stick that comes with the camera allows you to create some very unique shots which I guess leads me into number seven the Manfrotto Super Clamp. Now, I just want to mention this quickly because if you do decide to have any kind of camera set up on your scooter, then for me, this is a must. As you can see here, I have a basic Gorillapod style bendy tripod, which I can wrap around the scooter and use as a GoPro mount. It's good enough for those forward facing typical action camera shots, but what if you want to film yourself or get some unique angles? Well, that's exactly what this clamp allows you to do. Once you attach the clamp, you simply insert the quarter inch bolt for mounting cameras. Or in this case, I'll be attaching the invisible selfie stick. This is the official Insta360 selfie stick, which is perfect, it's really strong. With a normal action camera, you could mount the clamp and then have the camera sticking out to the side for shots like this. But as you can see, even with a wide angle action camera lens, we are quite limited to what we can see of the scooter and the rider. And of course, there's no hiding the selfie stick that is clearly visible in the shot. You could also mount it straight ahead with the camera pointing towards you for shots like this but again even with a wide angle lens you need a much longer stick if you're going to mount this type of camera and again you can still see the selfie stick however with a 360 camera and because the selfie stick now acts as an invisible selfie stick side shots now look like this and forward facing shots look like this. So yeah, if you enjoy making videos while on your scooter, especially for YouTube or social media, then I think the 360 camera and the super clamp combination is superb. It's not the cheapest hobby to suddenly get into, 
and I understand it's not for everyone, hence these items are in the bottom half of the top 10. Now I know not everyone likes to make YouTube videos with their scooter, which is why we're going to move on to more typical but still really cool e-scooter accessories. So next I've got something here which was actually recommended by a viewer after noticing that my tyre pressures seemed a bit low in a previous video and it's the official Xiaomi auto pump and what makes this pump so special? Well, <laughs> look at it. <laughs> I'm surprised Xiaomi haven't been sued by Apple given the fact that it looks like a big first generation iPod or something but as far as electric pumps go I, I think it looks proper neat. The auto pump has a digital monitor on the front side which can show modes and tire pressures. The physical buttons below the screen are a plus and a minus button. You have an illumination button, a mode button, a start and a stop button. The unit has good ventilation on either side and at the bottom is the mini USB charging port along with the battery level indicator. The Xiaomi auto pump doesn't have a power button, instead you just pull out the high pressure tube to turn on the pump and then when you want to turn it off you just reinsert the pressure tube and it will shut down automatically. Now if this pump was only for e-scooters I probably wouldn't recommend it because you hopefully won't be inflating your scooter tires that often to justify spending 35 quid on a pump. However, we've tested this pump on everything that we have available and it works an absolute treat. Not just on scooters, but bikes, sports balls, inflatable toys. Actually, the official claim is that on one charge, this pump can do either five car tires, eight bike tires, six motorcycle tires, which after testing, we can confirm to be about correct. A car tyre fully deflated will take about 8 minutes to fully inflate and after setting your required pressure level, either bar or PSI, the auto pump will continue inflating and then shut itself off automatically when it reaches the desired pressure. In conclusion, the Xiaomi Auto Pump is a fantastic portable emergency pump. The performance is superb and weighing in at only 500 grams, it's very convenient to take out with you. Throw it in your backpack or scooter storage bag. Thank you to Conrad Ryan for recommending this product. Cheers, pal. At number five, it's an e-scooter alarm system. Well, this is something that really doesn't take any explaining, does it? It's an alarm system that's easy to install on any e-scooter. If you want a great deterrent for those dirty scumbags that would steal your property, then I don't think you can go wrong with this, especially because it's just so cheap. I think this set me back about 20 quid and <laughs> I love it. This particular device has a remote control, so it works just like a car alarm. It has seven different sensitivity settings. It is IP55 waterproof. It has a vehicle find button, an SOS emergency button. The alarm is actually over 110 decibels <laughs> loudness. It comes with both zip ties and sticky pads for easy installation, and it is super easy to put on. Holy shit. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> that's a bit that's louder than what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> oh shit, it's got more. <laughs> now 
Now, for obvious reasons, this won't prevent someone just lifting the scooter to take it away still. And any determined scumbag that knows the alarm is there could easily just cut the zip ties and remove it. Lock. I go and steal my scooter. Huh? Hey. Oh! Hey, steal my scooter! <laughs> they would have to be bold as brass though to ignore that sound, right? So I guess that leads me on to number four. A good lock. Firstly, let me address a lock that I briefly mentioned in my last top 10 video, the alarmed disc brake lock as shown here. Now, after a few complaints that the lock did not fit the Xiaomi, I uh, ended up removing the link for this and just telling people not to buy it because I was feeling responsible for lots of people having to go through the refund process. I had just presumed that the manufacturer or the seller had either changed the size and it was no longer good for e-scooters. Well, as it happens, in preparation for this video, I bought a second one of these just to double check that it didn't fit. And to my surprise, <laughs> it fits no problem at all. What I did notice is that there are different sizes of locking pin available. So if this is something that you're interested in buying, then simply make sure that the pin is no larger than six millimeters. I have double checked that my link in the description takes you to the correct size alarm. So if you purchase this for the Xiaomi, the Pro, the Pro 2, etc, there will be no problems. It will fit just fine. Just like the previous product, this has a super loud 110 decibel alarm should anyone try to steal your scoop. The first move gets a warning, but if they keep moving, then <laughs> you know, and you also have the added protection of a disc lock. With this alarm, I don't bother with the reminder cable as it offers no real extra security. The cable could just be cut. That was about three locks in about three seconds. Yep, and it's amazing how much money people will leave for a cable like that. And because people could just ignore the alarm and still lift your scooter and take it away, even this type of lock should only be used in conjunction with a proper lock, which is what we have here. Yep, if you want to keep your scooter as safe as possible in a realistic way, you really need something like this. Now, D-locks are not invincible. The super scummy criminals carry all the tools that they need to get through most locks, including D-locks. I mean, that was pretty extreme. Do people actually walk around with these angle grinders? Yeah, again, they can be hidden quite well, they're quite small, compact, and they are used in the middle of the day. Really, with people walking around? Yep, who's gonna stop me with one of these? However, going for a gold standard lock, such as this, these will offer you the best protection for your e-scooter. Whereas a bronze standard is effective against an opportunist thief, a silver standard lock is a compromise between security and cost. A gold standard lock means that it's graded to last five minutes of attack by the most sophisticated tools. This lock, for example, has a patented crossbar design which includes enhanced anti-rotation features. It provides an advanced protection against twist and cut style attacks, which is the most common way to get through a normal D-lock. The locking cylinder is pick and drill resistant and included with this lock is a heavy duty four foot double looped cable if you want the added protection. Kryptonite do have even better D-locks than this available but they weigh quite a lot and they cost a bit more so th this is the one I would recommend however I will link to both in the description.
I need to get ready to uh, turn these off pretty quick. Right, here we go. So at number three, I've chosen a handlebar extension system. If you like to mount various things on your scooter but you don't have enough space, then this is a simple and stylish solution. When I first got my Xiaomi and after attaching a phone mount, there wasn't really any room to fit other accessories because the bell is on the opposite side and it doesn't really leave room for much else. Really, what I wanted was to be able to mount a holder for my DJI drone controller so that I could scoot and drone at the same time. However, it turned out that the mounts I was using for the actual drone controller, it was those that were useless. You see, these are just cheap plastic, sometimes 3D printed, that don't really secure the controller very well at all. Because they're all made from a flexible plastic, any vibrations just cause the controller to move around and eventually you'll go over a bump or something and the controller will just pop out, smash on the ground, not worth the risk. So I abandoned that idea but decided to keep the handlebar extensions because they are nice. Uh, it did get some use when I was mounting a 360 degree camera, but as you've seen earlier, I've also found a better solution for that using the Manfrotto Super Clamp. But if you do want multiple devices attached to your scooter, say a camera, a brighter headlight, a speaker, rear view mirrors, you name it, whatever you can think of, this could be the way to go. Well. If you've watched any of my recent videos, you will know all about this. It's the new suspension kit from Monorim. I'm not going to go into too much detail here because I've spoke about it plenty already, but this is a fantastic modification for e-scooters without suspension. It makes a very noticeable difference and it's easily one of my favourite additions to the Xiaomi. There's many cheap imitations out there and I would not recommend these because they're made from poor quality materials and they don't even have any, any effect on the scooter. Some can be a complete waste of money and even make your scooter dangerous. However, if you go with monorim, you will not be disappointed. The kit I got direct from Amazon is awesome, I really love it. Even if it didn't do much to iron out bumps on the road, I'd probably still like it because I just think it looks so cool on the scooter. But thankfully, it also does its purpose very well. There should be a link at the top of the screen now for my one year later review where I talk about the suspension in a bit more detail and if you'd like to see how easy or difficult it is to install then I have like a, a time lapse guide which you can watch and that link should be appearing on screen now or you can find the link in the description below. For e-scooters that don't come shipped with suspension then the monorim setup is what you want. It's really well made, high quality and it's a must have modification for the M365 Pro if you can be bothered installing it. It'll also work on M365 clones and I believe Monorim also do versions for 9bot scooters. You can check them all out on Amazon. At this moment in time, this is hands down my favorite e-scooter modification. All right. Here we go, here we go, some, some dramatic music please. Yep, it's the one thing nobody's ever seen me with up until this video. <laughs> it's a bloody helmet. Yep, although I've mentioned them before and I've even recommended one, this is actually the kind of helmet I prefer to wear myself. Now yeah, this might seem a bit overkill for an e-scooter, because I've also started riding an electric uni wheel, having a chin bar section is a must. Because it doesn't matter where you are with a uni wheel, when things go wrong, they bite hard. Now, of course, that's not to say things can't go really badly on an e-scooter. 
So some would actually say a full face helmet like this should be used for them also. However, I know many of you, just like me, will just not want to wear a full size helmet while going around on an e-scooter. Which is why I took some time to save up enough money to afford a convertible helmet. Yep, if you haven't seen them before, these helmets from Bell have a removable chin guard section. There is the Super DH helmet, which is like a heavier helmet that gives us superior protection. But then for a little bit more money, there's this helmet, the Bell Super Air R, which has a slightly different shape to the DH, but more importantly for me is that it's much lighter. In fact, this helmet weighs only 640 grams compared to the DH, which comes in at 850 grams. On this helmet, the chin guard is easily removed by releasing the two clips near the rear. And it's also really simple to reattach by just reversing the process. It just clips into place and then you fasten it shut. At the moment, I have to take the helmet off to reattach the chin guard, but with a bit of practice and after some time, you should be able to just keep the helmet on while you put it back together. Both of these convertible helmets have great reviews across the board. Both have integrated MIPS, which if you don't know, is multi-directional impact protection system, which is designed to reduce rotational forces from certain impacts. It's basically like a system that moves independently inside the helmet, mimicking like the brain's own protection system. It's really clever and it really does work. It's, it's not just a gimmick. These helmets are well ventilated, well made. They even come with a bracket for mounting an action camera that just fits into this ventilation hole here. It's uh, pretty cool. The helmet comes in a huge variety of colours, but I understand that the styling won't be everyone's taste. Also, they're not the cheapest helmets, but I think when it comes to safety, helmets should be considered an investment. You can't really put a price on a cracked skull. Having a good helmet could make the difference between misery and happiness somewhere down the line. Not to mention the ever-changing rules and regulations on e-scooters, especially here in the UK. Let's not give them more reason to ban these things and treat us like kids compared to the rest of the world. Wear a helmet, guys. Any helmet is better than no helmet. And there you have it. My favourite top 10 e-scooter accessories, volume 2 for 2020. I really hope you found at least something that you love or had never thought of. I wouldn't recommend anything to you guys if it's something that I don't own or use myself regularly. And I've made sure that at the time you post in, that the links in the description will take you to the best price for the genuine, well-reviewed products. I have no idea that if in 12 months time I'll be able to do a volume 3. I'm sure there's only so many things that can be an accessory for an e-scooter and well, we've done 20 already now. If you guys feel that I've missed something out or something new gets invented, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Feel free to leave your thoughts and opinions. I always try my best to respond to everyone, which is pretty easy because I'm still such a small channel. Oh, which reminds me, just days ago, I hit 5K subscribers. I got a little certificate from TubeBuddy and everything. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm well chuffed about that. I mean, who would have thought 5,000 people were interested in anything that I had to say. <laughs> well, that's crazy. But you know what? I'm really flattered though, and I couldn't thank you guys enough. Some people say that the YouTube comment section can be real toxic environment. And although I do get my fair share of trolling, it has to be said that 99.9% .9 of people are very supportive and saying nothing but thanks, love, and wishing me the best of luck with the channel. So, of course, thank you very much. It really does help with the motivation and things when people are nice. Not that I can't take criticism. I most certainly can. I mean, some people say that I talk too much in my own videos. I mean, can you believe such a thing? Me? Talk too much? Never. I don't believe it. Of course, an extra huge thanks to the fantastic foursome, my few patrons, Ashley, Chris, Jonathan and Minero. Until next time guys, thank you very much for watching. I will catch you all again as soon as possible. Take care out there. See you guys.
Yeah, I bet you's uh, I bet you've uh, never seen a shoe tree before. Well, if you live around here, you might have. But uh, the rest of you, can you see this? You get the way of the sun. Yeah, this is a, a shoe tree. A tree that grows shoes. You know what I mean? Look. Look. Okay, we've got another little bunch over here. Pretty man, alright. <laughs> 